All right. Hi, Ji. Thank you for joining us for this success story interview. 740 with a V40 and a Q50. Wonderful score. How do you feel? Yeah, hi, Adra. Thanks. Uh, I feel good. It's a bit of a relief. Yes. Okay. So, uh, if I remember correctly, started off with a 690. You only took around a month, month and a half to reach the 7, 740. So, quite diligent in your efforts. How did it all start? So, just give us a brief idea about how, how did you start with the course? How did the course help you? What were your strengths and weaknesses from the start? And then we'll talk about how did you improve upon them? So, uh, before EGMAT, uh, like I had started with, uh, like I was doing it on my own for three, over three months. And I was like stagnating at a course very often. So in the first six weeks, I did the OG and like everything. My score, like my baseline score remained the same. It was 690 and it remained to 690. But I I wanted to push uh, beyond 750. Um, so I got some advice from my seniors who had done their own programs and everything. So obviously it improved. Uh, I got a 730. So I, on a GMAT prep. So I was like, okay, I got a 730. That's good. So if I just keep doing this, I'll cross the 750 barrier. Mm -hmm. But then after four weeks of four weeks after that, my score dipped to 710. I was like, wait, hold up. 730 was a good day score for me. Like it was probably the best I could achieve. Not something, not a median score or anything. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, there, there are some issues. I'm not able to cross that 40 barrier. Mm -hmm. I think it's a barrier for a lot of people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then I tumbled upon your, uh, your the course. Uh, I was already aware of it, actually. Uh, to be honest, I actually uh, clicked on that. You know, I, I wanted to hide your ads a lot on YouTube. Okay. Like a month, like no, like way, <laughs> like way back. So maybe so after that, I finally succumbed to like getting into the course, like because I needed. I realized that okay, self study is not working. A little guidance will go a long way. I knew that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, with a fresh mind, I like I gave uh, I I actually mailed you, and I think it was a Sunday, and I got a reply mm -hmm. at 5 p.m. So mm -hmm. I was I was a little surprised. Um, so I was I was obviously impressed with that promptness, and then uh, I was told about how the program helps, how you use metrics to actually measure your progress over. Uh, over through the course and uh, I I was told to give a Sigma mock X it, it's your version of a mock exam mm -hmm. and the first time I got a 690 uh, there was a I got the same in verbal I got a V37 and a Q47 yes. okay okay point was a little lower than I had expected I was scoring Q50 very uh, like very regularly I was scoring Q50 this, but, these were in the GMAT prep mocks the official mocks. Yeah, yeah. Q fifty okay. in the GMAT official mocks, mm -hmm. but in Sigma X it went to forty seven. I was a little worried. Maybe I was in a different headspace. I don't know. Then I started with the course and uh, I started uh, head on with SC. Uh, I wanted to complete it within a month, but I wanted to be like very like I wanted to be very methodical about it. So I took. So you wanted to complete the entire time. course within one month. Yeah, I wanted to. The, the, okay. That was my first thing because I had an I had a deadline or something. Mm -hmm. I had my essays in place. I knew that I was going to uh, be able to do that. But um, one month I thought was reasonable time. But what happened was ultimately that, okay, I completed SC in 10 days. So I thought, okay, I'm going good. Uh, maths, I don't need a lot of work in quant. So maybe I'll just, if I do some practice, I'll be a little warmed up for the main test also, mm -hmm. but in CR, uh, I was not able to improve my timing. Mm -hmm. Right, the yeah, SC just, course was so, so just to just to be uh, go up step back. So, what were your initial weaknesses that you found out? Initial weaknesses, um, while going through the SC course, I I lacked that structure and how to you know. How to actually look at the questions? I used meaning-based approach only, like to understand the meaning first and then find out the grammatical grammatical errors. Mm -hmm. That was fine. Mm -hmm. But 
there is a certain structure of how to like go through that question because mm-hmm. gmat is not about just doing questions right mm-hmm. it's about doing them efficiently mm-hmm. so that efficiency point of view lagged a little bit because i didn't know the structure of how to like i was like very okay like, i'll just read it and just move on to the answer choices mm-hmm. so if you take us spend a few minutes in that question only Mm-hmm. uh you get a much better idea you will be much more faster in eliminating the other options mm-hmm. so that's something i lacked that mentality and that's what sc initially like just going through those facts right mm-hmm. so first it's all about the concept mm-hmm. uh, so then i moved to cr and cr i thought i had a conceptual problem mm-hmm. even though i had scored uh, really high in cr in my sigma mock test mm-hmm. uh, mock tests mm-hmm. uh but i thought that my timing was really bad it was like 3 minutes on average for a cr question mm-hmm. so i thought that maybe there is some conceptual error mm-hmm. uh so i tried to go through those modules i i used to i i got actually got a lot of new information about uh strength and questions like it's it's very basic actually like a lot of people might already know this but uh i used to think that strength and questions can be just something that strengthen it and nothing else but i i learned that strength and questions have to be something that cannot be inferred from the passage itself so you okay if, so so if basic it, conceptual it point cannot be strength and, yeah so mm-hmm. some the some of these points which i actually missed throughout my four months of prior prep mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. i was not aware of this fact so mm-hmm. you know it so it's like you should know the gmat first like just so that you can get so i did not know these little points Mm-hmm. so maybe that helped in cr uh, even the bold face one was really good mm-hmm. i was really that that module actually gave me an insight on okay this is how you go through the bold face questions i think the, those were a little uh, for me bold face was a little bit of problematic mm-hmm. uh, so in beginning at least mm-hmm. and then uh, rc uh, rc was also rc was actually good but i think maybe in the mock test it did not reflect well because i was not able to complete the exam okay so uh, so uh, when i actually moved to the first, to the cementing uh, stages of rc i got i got a i got confidence that okay i was already doing good mm-hmm. it needs a little refinement but otherwise it's good mm-hmm. so and, and and i remember your journey very vividly you know so three sub sections three very different starting points three very different approaches for sentence correction it was uh, the weakest among the three not that weak but still the weakest among the three you had gone through the entire course then scholarinium stage 1 and then stage 2 very diligent approach for cr you were fairly strong you were very you were fairly strong you went into cementing understood what were your problems then went into the course for precision targeting for rc again you were fairly strong um did the application and the practice files if i remember correctly just to you know get into that habit and fine tune those concepts yeah. so, so what uh, yes. yeah yeah what so so how important jeet is it for a student for example like you to have these different points and then use the course optimally because you know there is a course everyone can come do the entire course and move on to cementing but how do you use data how do you use your starting abilities for which the sigma x mock comes into the picture and then optimize the course in the best uh, fashion possible so i think most um, in quant it's fairly simple actually if you just go through the diagnostic quiz and i think that diagnostic quiz will tell you okay okay you don't have to do all of the things mm-hmm. you don't have to do the entire course mm-hmm. and just give you that filtered out uh, modules like okay just target hit these modules and you'll be good mm-hmm. and that saves a lot of time because you don't have to unnecessarily learn everything mm-hmm. because you have a, a certain starting point you have certain basics in that area i think that's very true for quant mm-hmm. for verbal there is there is no there is a diagnostic test in the beginning in the mm-hmm. very beginning not for mm-hmm. each and every sub module mm-hmm. but even if you take that you will get an idea okay this is where i stand and this is where i need to go mm-hmm. so uh, i thought that i had some issues with sc mm-hmm. in some of the concepts but i still i just wanted i am i'm i'm that kind of a person that likes to cover the breadth 
so i thought that okay let's just go through all concepts because uh, i i never learned those concepts very mm-hmm. formally mm-hmm. so if i go through that i'll get a much clearer idea mm-hmm. so i had some problems i knew i had problems with verb tenses mm-hmm. but there were some other problems with another section like um what are sections are there subject verb so yeah i had some yeah, parallelism in, comparisons modifiers yeah i had some issues in pronouns and idioms okay so yeah so i thought that okay idiom error is not something that you need to focus on a lot but if you have some idea it can get you through medium questions at least very easily okay yeah if you get medium questions wrong it gets a really big hit on your score right very true so yes you need to avoid that kind of mistake because it gets very, it gets very granular mm-hmm. when you are targeting a really high score so something like that you can say okay so uh, uh, talking about your quants you you are a good student in quant you had a very good uh, starting score then how did you use because as far as i remember our conversations we you i asked you to take some mending quizzes and then you had you found out that number properties is a big problem so then moving into the number properties course and how did the adaptive nature of the course help you yeah so uh number properties so initially i did not actually detect that error and before i went into cementing i did not know that i had a I had an issue in particular this area because i did not may, i may not have analyzed my previous mocks that well so what i found out is that medium questions i could handle fairly fairly very good actually mm-hmm. um, but, uh, when it came to hard questions that accuracy dropped very like drastically mm-hmm. so for that i need i needed to go back to the concepts mm-hmm. like when in hard questions there are some basic tweaks that you need in quant so if you know that basic thing if you're missing one link there it just uh, like it destroys the question entirely like you know mm-hmm. you you will not be able to do that question at least not in time mm-hmm. so so it's a, it's a basic concept right so if you i know that i can do it in one and a half minutes if i know everything mm-hmm. but you don't know that so it it's going to take you 3 minutes and 3 mm-hmm. minutes in quant it will be a little damaging it might not seem at first but it will be damaging as you approach the end of the test right so because of that you need to take care of that like you can get every question done in 2 minutes i am very sure of that mm-hmm. you know you can finish before time also in mm-hmm. quant mm-hmm. you have a good starting ability if you have a good like grasp on that mm-hmm. so yeah i think that's how it helps okay and and then how did you leverage the scroll data to 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 precisely target your weaker areas being a person who 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 who, are all, who was already strong in quant if you're just talking about quant um i think uh there are some weighted accuracies in e for each section mm-hmm. so for algebra and geometry and i think you can also pinpoint those questions so i think the main through like obviously you can use this colorenum data you can see those uh, charts and graphs and it will give you very visual nice aid like okay but i think the main thing comes or all, all the way back to your error log so even in number properties there are some further uh, bifurcations right so um i think if you can like i think i was good in divisibility and remainders mm-hmm. but i was not good in even odd properties right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so yeah so that kind of thing that can come through error log very like it will be it will become very prominent once you do error logging mm-hmm. and and you you really have to be very very honest there that okay i did not understand this question at all so i'm i'm just going to put that in that category that i did not understand I, I, it at I, I'll, all i'll i'll stop you here uh, you mentioned you have to be very honest while filling error yeah. logs and doing strategic yeah unfortunately you have to be you know mm-hmm. so can you just explain it a bit so that all fellow students have a proper guidance on on how to fill that error log and and the time that they need to because more often than not we don't find a lot of students doing that activity but that that's an activity that helps a lot of students you know get to that and understand basically so i i'd want your experience how was your experience with this yeah so first i was very tempted to actually just get on with the question but uh what i saw was like on the first page itself you will see that uh, i think there are some videos on how to make an error log right right just go through that just go through that 
like it seems like a waste of time it did seem to me at that at that moment but i think it really clears out things you know so uh, what I, how it works is uh, it will just say okay i had this type of problem mm -hmm. so when you after you solve that get it right it, it took you longer or it was a wrong answer so it actually forces you to question like to answer the question that why did you get it wrong Mm -hmm. So you sit for a minute and think that okay, this is why I got it wrong. This is what I was thinking. Uh, it seems very insignificant, but I th it actually helps you build. It does not. No, it it will just build on your concepts rather than building on your errors. So I think you will you will move in the right direction after that. Mm -hmm. That's what that's how important that self reflection part is. Mm -hmm. And reflection it needs to be honest. I mean, if you are if you're faking it at that point of time, maybe, you know, it doesn't, it, it won't reflect in your results. So the more honest you become, I think it will be better. It, it, you'll see that growth in your score as well. I, I, don't, I have no doubt. Yeah. Because, because I used to remember, you used to tell me that after I need one hour to review this 10 questions. And I, 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 I was to, I, I, I took, took, took me as a shock that why would you require one hour uh, just to review, let's say three questions that you had gotten incorrect. But then uh, I was very happy because we find a very less number of students who put this amount of time to strategically review each and every question. Because if you do that, you don't essentially, so students always have this funda that, you know, if I solve 200 questions, I'll become strong in CR. But that essentially does not happen, right? So uh, I think this is very true for uh, verbal. Okay, quant maybe I was already good at quant, so for that review process was slightly easier, faster for me. Right. May not aim for everyone. Mm -hmm. Verbal was more taxing, and it took me a while to actually understand that process. Uh, so what happens is like you are actually eliminating four options uh, mm -hmm. during the test, right? So in one question, you you obviously have only one right answer. But notice how you have four different ways that option can be wrong. So you learn actually four different ways in just a single question. So that is so very true. In, in, yes. In less, in less number of questions, you can understand a lot more about the wrong options that can potentially be on the test. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think you don't need to do 200 questions. I think like very frankly, I think 50 will do. I don't think I did like even before, uh, like even when you solve it, you don't need to solve even 50% of it mm -hmm. to be really honest. You can do it. Uh, if you believe that more practice, like gets you there, but, uh, practice only works once that, uh, part is that once that conceptual understanding, once that error spotting is, you know, fixed, like it's already set. And for that, actually you need to review more instead of just bringing on the questions because I, I mean, to be honest, I used to do that all the time. Uh, I'm an engineering student. I know I just want to study fast and give my exam. That's it. But GMAT is not that kind of a thing. Um, it requires a consistent effort and a, like, it's a very complicated psychological test in my mm -hmm. opinion. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think if you just take a step back to just know why you are doing something wrong, especially in verbal, it will be like, it will be a really opening. Like you'll see a huge growth in your, you'll see a huge jump in a very short amount of time. And trust me, you really want to save a lot of time on this prep because I know that it took me around six months mm -hmm. to finally get there mm -hmm. um, with the right resources, with the right guidance. I could have cracked it within three months. I could have mm -hmm. half my time. <laughs> and why wouldn't you do that, right? You can spend that time in some in your applications, perhaps. Mm -hmm. You can save some time, so why won't you? You know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that yeah, that direction is necessary. Very very true. Uh, uh, so so, what what advice would you give to fellow students? You know, um, and and I want, who who think that you know self studies. Yes, definitely might help, but there are some corners that that might not get. Uh, 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 addressed. So what would be your advice to such students? And then in, 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 in general, what would you advise for someone who's looking for, um, uh, 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 let's say a 50 or a 60 point improvement in a month's time? Right. So I think 
if you ask me i think that error log is an important part you can definitely start uh, working more positively towards that use it as a tool to get your high score not as a activity where you are just you know it's it should not be drudgery for you mm-hmm. it should be like that you should try to be more positive towards it i think that will help ease the process of how you approach those questions mm-hmm. and um as you said like uh, i think investing in a course will actually help you save time no one is questioning your intellectual capabilities right you can self study great that's good and even i i think i still think that i can self study i mm-hmm. could have mm-hmm. but it would have taken me a much longer time to realize what i can realize in a shorter amount of time mm-hmm. you know Very you true. just you know gmat is just one part of the applications and it it's not the most it's not the biggest part at least there are, there is this ymba question that will definitely stump you and i think that's the that would be the deciding factor not the gmat always mm-hmm. right so if you can you can if you can just optimize your time better mm-hmm. like you can probably invest in a course if you like i mean i, I it's it worked for me because i don't have a proper structure of how i study things uh perhaps at least for this particular test gmat is very different from all the exams that i have given mm-hmm. and you know, in this case if you just a little guidance go would go a long way actually this you just need a little like helping hand and mm-hmm. then you are all awesome. it's mostly you okay. so yeah that's that's well, all that I have. and 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 yeah that's very that's actually very important the student needs to be diligent he needs to follow the right resources track the right metrics and and metrics and one once the person does this Uh, things start becoming easy and some good habits obviously as you mentioned the log it won't be like very taxing on your head like okay i have to study ah so <laughs> you you won't wake up to that feeling that okay now i have to study but you will have something already prepared for you mm-hmm. and i'm guessing if you're a professional that will be really handy because you have a lot of things going on at work and you just want a structure already in, like a plan already in place Mm-hmm. and you don't want to waste time actually making that plan if someone just gives you that plan and you just have to follow it that it becomes very easy for your mind also like you can get a little bit of you can be assured that okay i don't have to do everything i just have to follow it and it will just work and okay. it does it it will work yeah very true um and and i was very happy looking at your diligence and how you coped up with all those new uh you know new things for example error lock meaning based approach this start but but you took it very fast inculcated those good habits and that's the reason you got a very good score in a very short amount of time a very diligent student very honestly ji throughout your lm journey is what i have tracked um so that is that is very good so what next plans where are you applying yeah i'm applying to uh, european universities uh-huh. i'm not really interested in euro schools but okay. i think yeah uh, so i think you will get a more you'll get more international exposure in europe mm-hmm. uh, at least what i have researched upon okay and i think yeah i think that's a prime driver for me mm-hmm. and the industries that i would be targeting maybe they'll be a little more helpful they'll be okay. more supportive in that continent mm-hmm. so that's why it goes so probably going for the top schools in europe but let's see Yeah, I wish you all the best. Um, do well in your applications, and and do let us know um, where yeah. you joined in. But but yes, thank you for all these insights, Chief. I'm very sure uh, the audience would like um, all your insights as as a first hand experience. So thank you for that, and and thank you for being here. Thank you, Atra.